Hey everyone, welcome to my updated Yomiya guide. If the Queen of the Summer Festival joined your party, then you're probably wondering how to make the most of her. And if she didn't, well, I have an updated Mona guide on my channel. I have been maining Yomiya for over a year now, so I have a ton of experience with her and knowing exactly what she needs and how to play her best. As always, I'll be teaching you exactly how Yomiya works, her best builds, and clearing up any questions you may have about her. My name is Braxophone, and today I'm super thrilled to be working with another super awesome Yomiya ex- Oh, yes! My name is Jenny Yokobori, and I am the English voice of Yoimiya in Genshin Impact. I'm just really glad that I can be here to, you know, teach you something about Yoimiya, since I'm an expert after all, definitely. With our introductions out of the way, let's get right into it. Let's talk about how to play Yoimiya. Yoimiya easily has one of the best looking designs in the game, and I can say that because I am obviously completely unbiased in my opinion. And her kit design is unique to her. She's currently the only character in Genshin that infuses normal attack arrows with an element except for Aloy. Her normal attacks are pretty standard except the jump and damage from her first attack to her last attack is pretty significant, so you want to make sure you finish her combos. This mostly means a shield can be super helpful to her. Her skill infuses her arrows with pyro and modifies their damage to be slightly higher. It lasts for 10 seconds and has an 18 second cooldown at Constellation Zero. When you get her first Ascension passive, it gives her a 2% pyro damage bonus for every infused normal attack hit she lands up to a max of 20% pyro damage. The stacks will only last for 3 seconds after you stop hitting enemies with pyro arrows, so you can't expect it to stick around for too long. But overall, it's a decent buff to her damage that ramps up the longer she's on field attacking. When her arrows are infused by her skill, she can generate a particle once every 2 seconds while attacking. So at max, she's getting 4 pyro particles back. It's a lot of energy for her since she's on field to pick up all of them. Yoimiya also has a special charge attack that will shoot up to three extra tiny arrows. These arrows can hone in on enemies, which is pretty darn cool if you ask me. Generally, her charge attack isn't as strong as her basic is, so you won't be using it most of the time. Also, when you use her skill, her charge attack won't gain three extra arrows. The last thing to talk about in Yoimiya's kit is her burst, which is kind of a touchy subject within the Yoimiya community because its damage isn't super duper high and because one of her best artifact sets requires her to have energy to spend to get its effect. So a lot of players opt to just not use it. Essentially, it marks an enemy and deals damage when that enemy takes damage from someone who's not Yoimiya, but it can only activate once every 2 seconds. It lasts 10 seconds at C0 and costs 60 energy. Something that not a lot of players know is that her burst actually buffs your team when you unlock Yoimiya's second ascension passive. When you use Yoimiya's burst, your team will gain a 10% attack buff, and the buff will gain 1% attack for every stack of bonus pyro damage you get from Yoimiya's skill. So essentially, you can give your team up to a 20% attack buff during her burst. 20% attack is equivalent to a noblesse or tenacity buff. It's not massive, but for characters that don't snapshot their stats like Singcho, for example, they'll be dealing more damage alongside Yoimiya. And for characters that do snapshot, they'll be gaining a 10% attack buff for their entire skill or burst. Basically, Yoimiya's burst does more than damage, and on top of that, in some teams, it can make up 10-15% to of Yoimiya's damage every two rotations. Couple that with the fact that it deals AoE damage and can hit multiple targets, and it's safe to say for the most part that you should be trying to use Yoimiya's burst when you can. There's only a few exceptions. For example, if you're using Rust and Shimanawa, depending on your team, it can be better damage to just ignore your burst. For any teams that don't have attack scaling like Yoimiya, Yelon, Albedo, Zhongli, the buff from Yoimiya doesn't really add a lot, so ignoring it is better in that case. One last thing about Yoimiya's burst is that if you're using Thundering Pulse, you basically have to use it. Otherwise, you're missing out on a stack of its passive, which we'll talk about in the weapons section here soon. For Yoimiya's talent level up priority, it's actually best to level up her normal attacks first before her burst and skill, since her burst damage contribution isn't as big as her basic attack. And the way her skill multiplier works actually doesn't even affect her damage that much. However, I attest that you should level up all of her levels as high as you possibly can because she deserves the best. Again, I'm biased. Next up, C6 Yoimiya Haver Brax is going to tell you all about Yoimiya's constellations and which ones are the most worth going for if you're going to spend on our Summer Festival Queen. In my opinion, it's all of them. 
As someone who sees 60 Oimia on her last run, I've had experience with her at both her free to play and whale potential. There's some constellations that are decent damage increases, and there's some that don't really do much. So I want to show you which ones are the good ones and where to stop if you're not getting C6. Yoimiya C1 does two things. It increases her burst time by 4 seconds, and also increases her attack by 20% after she defeats an enemy with her burst mark on them. Essentially, this is just giving Yoimiya a bit of extra damage, since it doesn't extend her attack buff for her team or anything. As for her C2 though, it's actually pretty strong. Whenever she crits with pyro damage, she gains a 25% pyro damage bonus for 6 seconds, which is a pretty dang solid blanket buff. Her constellation 3 is nearly useless, it just levels up her skill, and it has horrible scaling with her damage. Her fourth constellation lowers her elemental skills cooldown by 1.2 seconds whenever her burst triggers and deals pyro damage. This constellation was meant to shorten rotations, but honestly, there hasn't been a team that needs the rotation shortening that much. Odds are, after you rotate through all of your supports after her skill ends, she'll be ready to go when you get back anyways. So right now, it doesn't really do anything, but as we see more units in the game, it might become better. Her C5 increases her burst level by 3, which is is an okay but pretty low damage increase, and her C6 gives her a 50% chance to fire a bonus arrow with every attack in her skill window. That arrow will deal 60% of the initial arrow's damage, which is a pretty insane buff. It means two things. First, it means that Yoimiya can trigger reactions more frequently. Second, Yoimiya's personal damage output is going to be greatly increased. Because she can trigger reactions more frequently, you're going to get more reaction damage in total, you're going to see more overload, and more vaporize. However, the one thing to be aware of is that it will offset your vaporizes because it's essentially making it so that the three hit internal cooldown quota is being met much faster. And though it's a massive damage increase, it just means that you won't be able to do showcases as easily for high damage with her because it's harder to line up the biggest hits with her vaporize and melt opportunities. Of all the constellations, her C2 and C6 are gonna be the best. Her C6 can increase her damage by roughly 25 to 50% depending on your RNG. Her C2 is a blanket pyro damage buff for her, which adds a lot to her damage. Damage. If I had to recommend where to stop, to be honest, I don't really recommend pulling constellations at all on her if you're free to play, since her damage increase with constellations isn't nearly as insane as other characters. But if you're going to go in and aren't going for C6, then you'll want to stop at constellation 2, which is the highest damage increase outside of C6. Let me know in the comments below if you decide to get constellations. Next up, Jenny is going to tell you about Yoimiya's weapon options. Because Yoimiya has so many awesome teams you can use her in, her best weapons can vary a lot. There are also amazing free-to-play weapon options for her. So in this section, I'm going to go over some of Yoimiya's best options. Thundering Pulse is best for her since it's her signature weapon and made to buff the best part of her kit. And also it's very pretty. If you can keep up max stacks on Thundering Pulse, it's a really solid option. That being said, if you opt for 4 piece Shimanawa, which we'll talk about in the next section, you are forced to use Yoimiya's burst when it's up every two rotations or so, otherwise it can lose out to something like Rust. So essentially, if you're going to play Thundering Pulse, you need to understand Yoimiya's energy needs based on your team, or use a different artifact set. Even if you do miss out on the third level of normal damage bonus it gives though, it's still a solid weapon because of its crit damage main stat, so it is reliable. Now if you're not planning on rolling on the 2.8 weapon banner, don't worry. Rust is a solid runner-up for Thundering Pulse. At Refinement 5, it's only around a 10 to 15% damage loss from Thundering Pulse at Refinement 1, so it's a solid runner-up. For Refinement 1 Rust, though, other 5-star weapons can beat it out. Aqua Simulacra and Polar Star are both solid options for their crit stats and passives, even if Polar Star can't get more than 3 stacks at a time. Skyward Harp is also great for its base attack, passive, and crit main stat, and Amos Bow has decent stats as well. If you don't have any of those options, you can always build Slingshot. Slingshot is a 3-star weapon, so a lot of players are off-put by it, but it's actually better than some of the 5-star options when you use buffs. It can be hard to believe, but with a crit rate main stat and a passive that increases normal and charge attack damage, it's similar to Rust, but easier to build. The only thing it lacks is a high attack stat, which is why if you compensate with a buffer like Yunjin or Bennett or Noblesse and Tenacity, it ends up being really competitive with Rust. It's super easy to refine since it's a 3 star, so if you don't plan on going for Rust or Thundering Pulse, I recommend building Slingshot for her. There may be a few cases where you're not running buffs in your team, like Double Hydro with Zhongli or just skipping out on Bennett or Yunjin in general. In that case, Slingshot does lose a ton of value, so without Rust or any 5-star weapons, you'll want to use Viridescent Hunt, Prototype Crescent, or Hamayumi instead. The TLDR is that Thundering Pulse is the best, 
but harder to play sometimes. Rust is runner-up, and Slingshot is the next best thing if you're playing with buffs. There will be a Teams video releasing on Brax's channel here soon that talks about different weapons, buffs, and composition, so keep an eye out if you want to know more. Next up, let's talk about Yoi Mia's artifact builds! For the players who are below AR45 with their Yoimiya, don't worry about spending resin to farm artifacts right now. Once you get to AR45, you're going to be guaranteed a 5-star artifact drop from the highest level domain, so if you farm now, you'll likely just be replacing what you spent resin on in a pretty short time, and it's just not really worth it. What I recommend for pre-AR45 players is to check and see if you have any Martial Artist pieces or an 18% attack bonus set. The Martial Artist set gives Yoimiya a normal and charged attack damage bonus, which is actually stronger than straight up attack stats most of the time. Honestly though, look out for the right main stats instead of sets. You're going to want to build attack on your sands, pyro damage or attack percent on your goblet, and attack or crit on your circlet. You'll prioritize crit later, but unless you can get your crit ratio to be 50 crit rate to 100 crit damage, odds are you're going to be more consistent with an attack circlet. Once you get to AR45 though, you can truly start farming for Yoimiya. Now there's going to be a lot of information in this section, and I'm going to separate it by timestamps, so feel free to come back to certain sections or skip ahead, whatever's going to help you understand things easier. First, I'm going to cover this in another video, but Echoes of an Offering is a huge trap and I do not recommend it for most people. It has a chance to buff your attacks, and the buff is pretty big, but on average it's pretty close to Shimanawa. The main issue with it is that it's reliant on your ping, which is essentially just your connection to the Genshin Impact server. If you play above 30 ping, you're losing out on a lot of opportunities for the effect to activate, so your overall damage gets lowered. I'm not really sure why Hoyoverse implemented it this way, but either way, if you combine that with the fact that you could also just get really unlucky with aligning the buff, crits, and vaporizes, there's just way too much RNG to make it worth it. Obviously, if you have a really good set of it and you don't have any of these other sets I'm going to talk about, it's fine, but it shouldn't be your end goal. The rest of Yomiya's artifacts can be a bit of a toss-up, because there's a lot of set options and they depend on the playstyle you're going for. Most people will suggest 4-piece Shimanawa, which comes from a domain you'll spend lots of time in anyways, and gives you a 50% damage bonus to your normal, charged, and plunging attacks after using your skill. The set bonus itself is pretty good, but it costs 15 energy to activate, and if you don't have that, you miss out on the huge damage bonus and the passive becomes basically useless. As Jenny said earlier, Yoimiya's burst makes up for a decent portion of her personal damage, but it also buffs your team's attack. For that reason, a lot of the time, you're still gonna want to use it. But if you don't have teammates that scale on attack, for example, if you're using Yolan, Albedo, and Zhongli, your burst attack bonus is basically useless, and in that case, you can just ignore it in favor of using Shimanawa on cooldown. Essentially, Shimanawa is a really good set for her if you know what you're doing, but can be worse than other alternatives if you don't. If you don't really care about rotations and stuff, you can always just use Shimanawa and ignore her burst, and you'll still get okay damage, but just be aware that you won't reach her maximum damage potential if you decide to ignore it. If you really want to max out Yomiya's damage, you'll want to be generating a lot of energy on your team so that you can use Yomiya's burst and get the Shimanawa effect, which usually means a teammate will have Vivonius as well. And we'll talk about that in my team's guide coming soon. Now, as Jenny mentioned before, if you have Thundering Pulse, you need to use her burst when you have it, otherwise you'll lose out on the third stack of the weapon, and at that point, Rust would just be a better choice. But if you're playing Shimanawa, after you burst, you may not be able to get the Shimanawa effect since you'll have reset your energy bank. In that case, you have two options. One is to play a team that generates a ton of energy with a solid rotation, and the second option is to play a different artifact set. There are three main alternatives that I have for sets, with the first set being Retracing Bolide. Retracing Bolide is an amazing set and actually the canon set for Yoimiya. If you go to the lore part of the artifact page, it literally talks about the Summer Festival, and it looks exactly like her entire aesthetic, but the effect is also a perfect match for her. The 4-piece set gives 40% normal and charged attack damage bonus, which is just below Shimanawa's, but the benefit is that you don't have to manage your energy at all. You can burst on cooldown with Yoimiya, buff your team, and still deal solid damage altogether. One thing in particular that a lot of people don't talk about and don't understand super well is the 2-piece effect of Retracing Bolide, which grants 35% shield strength. A lot of players think that this only applies to shields made by the character with Bolide on, but Retracing Bolide is actually coded to only provide the shield strength to the wearer. So if you make a shield with Diona and switch to Yoimiya with Bolide, Yoimiya will have the extra shield strength, but Diona won't. Yoimiya is actually really hard
hard to get maximum value out of without a shield because her strongest attacks are the last ones in her combo. And if you dodge mid combo, you can actually lower her damage significantly by offsetting her vaporize damage too. So this set complements her in that way as well, being able to take more hits without getting staggered or losing health. It's not a perfect set either though, it's farmed in the same domain as Archaic Petra, which is a set that not a lot of characters want to use. But if comfort of play is something that you really value, this set can be worth it. If you do farm a set of Bull Eyed, you can use her burst whenever and always have the damage bonus and a shield, but its damage is technically less than a Shimanawa set with perfect play, and it will be less resin efficient to go for. Now as another option, you could always go for the 4-piece Crimson Witch set, which buffs both your pyro damage and your pyro reaction damage. If you're playing Yoimiya in an over vape team, which is a team with both vaporize and overload together, you can get close total damage to Shimanawa with that set, and in some cases, even more damage than Shimanawa. But if you're only in vaporize or only in overload, you may find that the damage falls off a little bit. And honestly, the damage is so close between these three sets that the one with the best substats may just be the best. As for other options, you can always go with a mix of attack percent pieces or two-piece Crimson Witch with another set, which can get you solid damage still and let you burst whenever. If you're playing Shimanawa without burst, the 2-2 setup with an attack set in Crimson Witch can actually be more damage. On top of that, getting the right main stats and good substats can be easiest with the 2-2 setup. Yoimiya has lots of viable sets to think about, so here are the pros and cons of everything. For Echoes, it's theoretically competitive with Shimanawa, but there's too much RNG between buffing big hits and vaporizes. When you have ping over 30, it's usually worse than Shimanawa and Bolide. Now, 4-piece Shimanawa has the highest damage potential. It requires the right team or energy knowledge to maximize the damage, but it's really rewarding when you have it. It's also in a good domain to farm, because lots of characters want the emblem set, and that's going to be the other set that accompanies Shimanawa in that domain. Now, as far as 4-piece Crimson Witch goes, it has extremely high damage potential in reaction teams, but it is absolute pain to farm because the other set doesn't see a lot of play right now that might change in Sumeru, but as of right now, it looks like the Lava Walker set isn't going to see much use, and also this set is less valuable in plain Vaporize or Overload teams. It's still pretty good, but it gets the most value out of an Over Vape team. As for Retracing Bolide, it has very solid damage potential. It buffs shields for Yoimiya and makes her a lot easier to play. You don't have to worry about energy management at all, but similar to the Crimson Witch set, it shares a domain with an artifact set that isn't used a whole lot. The Archaic Petra set doesn't really find itself on many teams because there's usually just better and easier to use options. So if you're farming for retracing Bolide, you could end up with a whole bunch of pieces for a set that you're not going to use. And for a 2-2 setup with Crimson Witch and an 18% attack bonus, the sets are all easy to farm because you only need two of each set, which means you're a lot more flexible. You don't have to worry about energy management. You can get higher quality substats. And though the damage potential is lower usually, it's still more damage than Shimanawa in some settings. For example, if you have Thundering Pulse and you don't use her burst, 2 and 2 can beat out Shimanawa pretty easily. You can pick whichever one is the best for you. Personally, I'm going for a retracing Bolide set because it makes playing Thundering Pulse much easier, but generally the safest bet for players that also want emblem sets for their other characters is to run the Shimanawa domain. Now luckily for us, stats for Yoimiya are a lot easier. There's only a couple things you need to worry about. For main stats, most builds want attack percent, pyro damage, and crit rate or damage. Whether you pick crit rate or damage is going to depend on which which you need to get close to a 1 to 2 ratio of crit rate to crit damage. By that I mean you should aim for a minimum of 50 crit rate to 100 crit damage and try to keep that ratio 1 to 2, like 60 crit rate, 120 crit damage, 70 crit rate, 140 crit damage. As for energy recharge, as always it depends on the team, but for the most part you don't really need much. The reason is that Yomiya can't reliably burst every rotation unless you're in content with multiple targets and generating tons of HP particles, so you're aiming to use her burst every other rotation. I like to have around 130% energy recharge, but realistically, if you're not using Shimanawa, you don't really need any at all, since Yoimiya will generate a decent amount of energy for herself when she's on the field. A ton of players have come to my stream at twitch.tv slash braxophone, make sure to go follow if you're not already, and asked about Elemental Mastery on Yoimiya. The deal with Elemental Master Yoimiya is that you need to meet a specific criteria to make it work. Yoimiya's first and fourth attacks in her combo deal low damage, but her second, third, and fifth attacks have somewhat high multipliers. Because of standard internal cooldown, she's able to consistently vaporize 1, 3, and 5, which can bring her damage up a fair bit. However, if you have to dodge mid combo, that can actually offset her vape count, hitting on 2 and 4 instead. When that happens, you miss out on a fair bit of damage. And on top of that, because ICD is based on the enemy's hit rather than Yomiya's attacks, 
It's really easy to switch targets and offset her vaporizes there too. Basically, EM Sands can be better situationally, but it requires Bennett or Yunjin in order to compensate for the lost attack stat on her Sands, and it also needs a shielder like Zhongli to stop her from getting her combo interrupted or needing to move. It limits her team comps a lot for the slight increase in damage, and even then, it's not that consistent. So I personally don't recommend EM Sands. It's one of those things where if you really know team comps, stats, and the content you're trying to clear, it's gonna be better. But for the average player, you should probably just leave EM to your substats and buffs. Now, as far as substats go, you're gonna wanna prioritize crit rate and damage, attack percent, and elemental mastery. Put energy recharge to 130% first if you're gonna use Shimanala, but outside of that, her substats are pretty simple. So just in case that was like way too much information and overstimulation, here are two example builds for Yomiya that could work really, really well. The first one is a free-to-play friendly build featuring either Rust or Slingshot. Slingshot only if you don't have access to Rust with attack, pyro damage, and crit. And since you're using the Shimanala, Minawa set, you do want to have at least 130% energy recharge so you can burst every other rotation, but in some teams you might find that you don't need that. It's just a good safety net. And then you want to have also at least 50 crit rate and 100 crit damage. For the second build, we're going to be looking at a Crimson Witch Gladiator mix, so the 15% pyro damage bonus and the 18% attack. And now the reason I opted for this over Shimanawa is because with Thundering Pulse, you need to make sure that you don't have 100% energy so you can get max stacks on it. And Shimanawa takes 15 energy from you, so it's easier for you to play if you use your burst when it's up without Shimanawa on, so that way you're constantly getting the damage bonus. And overall, this set shouldn't really have energy issues. Yomiya generates a lot of particles for herself, and you'll be rotating through your supports. One thing to note, is that if you are going to use Thundering Pulse, it does say at least 50 crit rate to 100 crit damage, but since Thundering Pulse has a crit damage main stat, ideally you should be able to get higher than that. You should be looking for about 70, 140 at the minimum before you call your Yoimiya build like complete or pretty close to done with Thundering Pulse. Though her kit seems simple, Yoimiya is an intricate character. There are tons of nuances to maximizing her potential, but that makes her pretty fun. Her best weapons and artifact sets change based on the team she's in and the content you're trying to clear, but that also leaves a lot of flexibility in her gameplay. She has free-to-play friendly weapon options, tons of artifact sets to choose from, and some of her best teams can have underused characters as core components. If you want to know more about Yoimiya's teams, check out the Yoimiya team guide that's coming out really soon. The link will be in the description when it's up. As always, thanks for watching everyone. I hope this guide helped you understand Yoimiya's kit, builds, and what she's all about. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content and leave a like so YouTube knows the video doesn't suck. If you're interested in live content, you can check out Jenny's Twitch at twitch.tv slash jennyokaborivo and also feel free to stop by mine at twitch.tv slash braxophone. We'll both be live when Yoimiya's banner is up to pull for Thundering Pulse and Constellations and I will also be doing polls for viewers so if you want to come by when Yoimiya's banner drops on NA, make sure to go follow. Good luck everyone, and I'll catch you next time.